Take your Bibles, Acts chapter number 2. Book of Acts chapter number 2. Let me set the table. What's happening? Jesus has died. He's risen again. He's been seen of some 500 witnesses. He's appeared to his disciples on multiple occasions. And he's ascended back into heaven. And he told his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait until they were endued with power from on high. And when the Comforter came, they were to be witnesses of him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. For 10 days, the disciples met in an upper room. Some 120 of them were there, praying, seeking the Comforter. The Holy Ghost fell upon them. And they began to have a fit, like some of these guys today. You've seen them hop, hooping and hollering. And the Lord gets so big on the inside, he's got to come out. Then the great day of Pentecost transpires where Peter gets up and preaches. And we're not going to read the whole chapter, but at the end of the chapter, 3,000 souls were added unto the church that day. The miracle of Pentecost is people were there from all nations, but as Peter preached, every man heard in his own language. They come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the middle of Peter's great sermon... He addresses the Jews who had crucified Jesus. Yep. And we want to look at that this morning. Acts chapter number 2, we'll begin reading in verse 22. The Bible says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Verse 25, For David speaketh, by the way, this is in Psalm 16, Concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also, my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he was both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for this day that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, every other religious leader, every cult leader, everyone that was supposedly of God is still in the grave. You proved you were God by getting up that third appointed day, stepped out of the grave, was seen of many witnesses, ascended to heaven. Oh Lord, and you're coming back for your church, and we bless you. Now, Father, in a crowd this size, there's no telling the needs. There's no telling what's going on even in people's minds right now. Lord, uh, there's some who've come to worship. There's some who's come out of obligation. There's some who've come for other reasons. But Lord, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd speak to hearts. I pray you'd help us, elevate us to set in heavenly places. Now, Father, I pray 
For those who are saved by the good grace of God, you would confirm in their heart the goodness of God. Help them to realize that this is more than just a holiday. Uh, Lord, this is a hallmark day. And God, I certainly pray for those in our attendance this morning. Lord, though they're here, though they might be religious, though they might be good moral people, though they might, uh, Lord, think they're okay with you, but Lord, they are not. They're still lost in their sin. Amen. Lord, they just don't realize it. They don't realize the big deal. They don't realize that, oh Lord, we worship you and rejoice in you because of what you have done for us. Some, Lord, know they're lost, and oh Lord, they think they've just got plenty of time. Yeah. And so, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd remove the blinders from their eyes. Those that don't know their loss would fall under Holy Ghost conviction. And through the power of God, the power of the resurrection that we celebrate today, they'd come to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that know their loss and think they have plenty of time, Lord, help them realize this old world's going down like the Titanic went down. Lord, there's no hope for this world, and there's no hope for them outside of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that they'd realize what you said in the scriptures that today is the day of salvation. Lord, we don't know if we'll have another day to get saved. I pray that today would be the day they'd give their heart and life to Jesus. Now, Father, help me. Use me for your glory. Empower us from heaven on high. We'll bless you and praise you for what you do, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. If you listen fast, I'll preach fast this morning. I'm no longer allowed to say that I want to look at something for a few minutes because Miss Addie Page was sitting by my wife last Sunday when I said that, and she says, why does he say that? He never gets done in a few minutes. He speaks for a long time. But I do want to draw your attention. You did say that, Addie Page. I heard all about it. Yep, she's going, yep, I did. Hey, these kids are smarter than we give them credit for, huh? But I do want to look at this uh, wonderful text. I want to bring out the thought God's given me. I want you to notice, first of all, the wonders of Jesus' ministry. Look with me in verse 22. Peter reminds these men. He says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of, Ma of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also knew. I've got news for you. Even though they didn't have CNN and Fox News and NBC and all ABC and the BVDs and every other news agency, uh, 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 even though they didn't have that, everyone in that region of the world knew of Jesus. Uh, they knew of his wonderful miracles. Uh, 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 those uh, uh, that had him crucified witnessed firsthand in the temple uh, when he told the man with the withered hand to reach out his hand and his hand was made whole. Uh, uh, they'd seen him uh, heal the lepers. Uh, they'd seen him take the lame and make them walk again. Uh, hey, they'd known of three accounts where he raised the dead. That is very uh, uh, important because Isaiah makes it clear in Isaiah 35 uh, only God could do certain things. Uh, and one of those things is that he opened blinded eyes. Uh, they knew people who were blind from birth, uh, but they came in contact with Jesus, uh, and they could see. Uh, and Jesus did many miracles in his ministry. Uh, can I say the Bible makes it clear that the Jews required a sign, and he did all these miracles to prove that he was God. Uh, we see the wonders of Jesus' ministry is mentioned. Notice the will of God concerning Jesus manifested. Look at verse 23. It says, Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, uh, ye have taken by, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Peter uh, 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 probably didn't even realize what he was saying, uh, and Luke inspired to write it down. Uh, that it was from the determinate counsel of the foreknowledge of God that Jesus came. Uh, uh, the Bible says he was the lame slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter number 1 uh, that Jesus made everything that was made. Uh, and when he was making it, uh, he already knew, Brother Ron, he was coming into this world. Uh, he was going to go to Calvary. Uh, he was going to bleed and die for the sins of the world. Uh, 
We see that the will of God concerning Jesus was manifested long before Jesus even came. But then I want you to notice the work of Jesus is matchless. Look at verse 24. It says, Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Can I say only Jesus rose from the dead under his own power? He raised three others from the dead, but again, it was by his power. When Martha was mourning her brother who had died, uh, and Jesus shows up four days after he's been in the grave, uh, 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 he says, do you believe he's going to be uh, be made alive? He said, yeah, in the resurrection, he'll be made alive. Uh, And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, Hey, he is the giver of life. Uh, He laid down his life and took it up again. The and can I say, the works of Jesus is matchless. Nobody's ever done that. Uh, but I'm interested when it quotes David. And David said that, verse 20 said, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. And Peter clarifies it, verse 31. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Now David prophesied about Jesus' resurrection some 570 years before Jesus walked out of the grave. Mm -mm. Can I say, everything Jesus did, he did to fulfill the scriptures. Mm -mm. Can I say, nothing just happened by accident or chance. It was foretold, and he fulfilled it, proven he was God. Uh, and can I say today, if you're not saved, you'll never get saved apart from the Scriptures. Right. Right. And can I say, if you are saved, you got saved because you heard the Scriptures and you heard that Jesus saved sinners. But I'm interested when the Scriptures talks about hell. In both verse 27 and both uh, in verse 31, he mentions that his soul was not left in hell. In the Scriptures, hell can refer to three things. Can I say it first can refer to death. The Old Testament word is Sheol, the grave. Many times when they talked about their soul going to hell, they talked about going to the grave, dying. But that's not what he's talking about here. Uh, Also, hell can be referred to dolor, or what we know as Hades. Hades is a place that was in the lower parts of the earth where the wicked die and go to and suffer until they're called out of there. Now, can I say something about the dolor of Hades or hell, the misery of it? It's a place of anguish. You hear people say, I'm going to die and go to hell and party with my friends. There's no party going on in hell. Luke 16, we get a picture of it. It's a place of torment and torture. It's a place of misery and pain and agony where one drop of water would cool the tongue and there is no water to cool the tongue. It's a place where the odor is so uh, ghastly that you want to throw up, but you cannot throw up because the liquid would cool your tongue. The place where there's mental anguish. Because you'll remember services like this where you had an opportunity to put your faith in Jesus and you rejected him. You'll remember every time you drove by a church. You'll remember every message you ever heard. You'll remember every time you saw a Bible. You'll remember every time you heard the name Jesus Christ. And you did not turn to him. You rejected him. It's a place of anguish. It's a place of, of affliction. Where... You want to die, but you can't, but your body is tormented in so many ways that you think you're dying. It's a place that's called a bottomless pit. You feel like you're falling, but you never land. It's a place of anguish and affliction, and it's a place that is absent of hope. There is no hope for those that die and go to hell. You said, preacher, you said they get called out. Now, that's the third Reference to hell in the scriptures, it refers to eternal damnation. All those that are in hell one day will be called out and they'll be judged for their sins and then they're sent to the lake of fire and they'll spend all of eternity 
paying for their own sins because they did not let Jesus pay for them with his own blood. Last week I preached with the Lord's help on heaven and why you're not going. This week I'd like to preach with God's help on hell and why I'm not going. Hmm? Huh? You can go if you want to. I'm not going. You can tell me to go to hell and I'll say, I'm not going. Huh? Hey, can I say it is impossible for me to die and go to hell. If I wanted to go to hell, I couldn't go to hell. Huh? Why? Because of what Jesus has done in my life. I'm not going to hell and I bless His holy name. Uh, Say, preacher, why are you not going to hell? I'm glad you asked. Uh, I'm not going to hell because of the blood that was shed on Calvary. Uh, You see, uh, there have been many people who have been crucified throughout the ages. Uh, There's been many people who've died on crosses. Uh, There's been many good people who died for good causes. Uh, But there's only been one time uh, when the Son of God uh, uh, came uh, from heaven uh, and He went to the old rugged cross uh, and He shed His blood for our sins. You say, what's the big deal? Here's the big deal. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, hey, every one of their offspring became sinners. Our blood is tainted by sin, but I've got good news. Jesus didn't come from Adam and Eve. Uh, He came from the glory. Uh, He stepped into the womb of a virgin named Mary. Uh, His blood didn't come from this earth. Uh, His blood didn't come from this world. Uh, His blood is righteous blood, royal blood, redeeming blood. Uh, And it took the perfect blood uh, of a perfect lamb uh, uh, to pay for the sins of the world. Uh, I'm not going to hell because that blood's been applied to my life. Look with me, if you will, in verse 21. The Bible says, Peter's preaching. He says, And it shall come to pass uh, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, third Saturday night of March, 1974, some 48 years ago. Uh, hey, uh, as a 10-year-old boy under conviction, I knew I was lost. Uh, I knew I needed to be saved. Uh, and that night, uh, I called on the Lord just like it said in verse 21. Uh, and when I called, he answered. Uh, hey, and he forgave me of my sins uh, and he washed away my sins with his blood uh, and I can't go to hell uh, because my sins are gone Uh, you see me uh, as just a filthy vile sinner uh, and in my flesh that's what I am Uh, but when I called on the Lord uh, he saved my soul uh, sealed it with the Holy Spirit of promise uh, and my sins uh, uh, though they were many uh, are gone washed away uh, never to be remembered anymore uh, because of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Uh, I'm not going to hell because of the blood that was shed. Uh, Can I say this? I'm not going to hell because of a bodiless tomb. We've sang about it all morning. Uh, We've mentioned it all morning. Uh, The tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. Uh, Hey, when Jesus died, uh, listen, uh, he was buried. Uh, He went to hell. Uh, Hey, in Revelation 1, he says he has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Uh, Hey, the devil don't even have the keys to his own house. Uh, Hey, he conquered my hell. Uh, And then on that resurrection morning, uh, he come out of the grave. Uh, He conquered the grave. Uh, He conquered death. Uh, Hey, death has no sting for a child of God. Uh, Hey, because it couldn't keep him, uh, it won't keep me. Uh, Hey, there's coming a great resurrection morning. Uh, When the trump of God shall sound, uh, Jesus is going to step out on the clouds. Uh, The dead in Christ are going to rise from the graves. Uh, We which are alive and remain uh, shall be caught up together with them. uh, And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, Hey, because the tomb is empty, I'm not going to hell. Mm. Hey, if the devil could have kept him dead, there'd been no hope. You do realize what happened. In Psalms 22, Jesus, it's prophesied, he's hanging on the cross, uh, and he said, Brother Ray, the bulls of Basham, uh, 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 they have encompassed me. 
And that's uh, referring to the demons of hell. Uh, I believe Satan was there that day. Uh, I believe all the demons of hell were that, there that day and they was trying to kill Jesus uh, while he was hanging on the cross. Uh, you see, if they could have killed him... Uh, he wouldn't have been God. Uh, 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 they're there. And it was so hideous, Brandon, the sight of what was going on that day uh, that God turned off the sun. Uh, and for three hours there was total darkness on the earth uh, as the darling Son of God was suspended between heaven and earth uh, paying our sin debt. Uh, and all the while, uh, uh, the demons were agonizing him. Uh, when Christ saw the scriptures were fulfilled, he said, it is finished. And the Bible says, he gave up the ghost. And Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus begged for the body of Jesus. They took it down, went and put it in Joseph's own tomb where never a man had ever been. The Jews said, seal up that tomb. That deceiver said... Uh, He'd rise again, so we want to make certain uh, none of his uh, followers come and steal him away. And they put guards at the tomb. Amen. Did you ever think what happened? Jesus laid in the grave for you, Colton. Just died for your sin. Sure did. Amen. And hell's having a party. Yeah. Hell done thought they killed him. Yeah. Mary, they, we got him now. Yeah. Satan's getting fitted for his robe he said I'm about ready to kick the doors open of heaven and I'm taking over hell's having a party they're having themselves a stupor they're having themselves a something man but that first night passed next night passes they're still having a party they're excited more excited than ever before they're getting out of there you see all them demons are fallen angels they know what the abode of God looks like. Yeah. And they're thinking, boy, it's now ours. We're going back. We're taking it back. Uh, 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 we're taking that. We're kicking God out. Huh? And that night passes. Then the third night. Boy, they're all excited. They're revving up their engines, ready to go. But that early, early Sunday morning, there's a knock on Hill's door. Satan tells one of them devils, hey, go see who it is. He goes up and says, who is it? He says, it's me. He said, who are you? I am. <laughs> the devil looks back at Satan and says, the door's for you. Sure. Jesus walks in and he looks the devil right between the eyes and says, give me the keys. Yeah, amen. Huh? You say, what did the devil do? He bowed down before him like he has every other time he's come in contact with him, and he handed him the keys. Huh? And the Lord turned around and started to walk out. He turned around and said, now look. He said, my blood is sufficient, and it's going to pay for the sins of the whole world. And many aren't going to receive me, but those that do, uh, you can have your way with them for a while. But I'm coming back, old boy. And I'm going to put an end to this thing. And I'm going to grab you and throw you in the lake of fire where you're going to burn forever and ever and ever. Uh, and he walked out of, uh, of, the, of hell uh, and he walked out of the grave. Uh, hey, uh, angels sitting there. Uh, uh, all the guards that were posted, uh, they fell as dead men. Uh, and he walked out. Uh, they even refused to talk about what they saw. It startled them so much. Uh, hey, Mary and some of the women come down to anoint his body. Uh, found the angels. Angels said, why seek you Jesus? Why seek you the living, uh, the dead among the living? Uh, hey, he's no longer here. Uh, he got up like he said he would. Go tell his disciples. Uh, and Peter and John ran down and found it to be so. Uh, and it's been empty ever since. Uh, I'm telling you, because of a bodiless tomb, uh, I'm not going to hell. Hallelujah. And I say this... Uh, I'm not going to hell because of the birth I secured. In John chapter 3, one of the most religious men in the Bible, a man by the name of Nicodemus. He's a ruler of the Jews. He's a Pharisee. Let me help you with that. That makes him more religious than anybody in this Bible. That makes him more religious than all of us included. He had the first five books of the Bible memorized. Do you think we can all get together and quote all five chapters of the five books of the Bible? First five. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We got that down? 
Uh, you got chapter 1 of Genesis, you got chapter 2, you got chapter 3, you got did you think we could do it? No, he had it all memorized. Mm. In touching his life, you could not find any fault. He never missed the synagogue. He was there every Sunday or every Saturday. He paid tithes of everything he owed. He offered the right sacrifices. He dressed right. He walked right. He spit right. He did everything right. But he saw something in Jesus. He comes to him by night. He says, we know you are of God. He called him rabbi, first of all. Why would he call him rabbi? Because there was just something about Jesus. He called him master. He said, we know you are of God. Nobody could do the works you do except God sent him. And Jesus gives him some wonderful advice. He says, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. He said, all your religion's in vain. All your knowledge is in vain. All your works is in vain. All your sacrifices is in vain. All your tithes are in vain. Everything you do is in vain. Unless you get born again, you must be born again. He said, how can I enter my mother's womb a second time? He says, no, no, not a physical birth, a spiritual birth. Uh, you got to be born of the water, of the Spirit. Uh, you got to be born again. Uh, you got to have a new birth. Uh, and I want to tell you that night uh, that I called on the Lord, He saved me, uh, changed me, uh, adopted me in the family of God. Uh, I got born again. Uh, nothing like it. Uh, hey, the bird sounded sweeter, the glass looked greener, the sky looked blower. Uh, hey, uh, I really started living when I got born again. Uh, we're all born physically. But unless you get born spiritually, you're going to die and go to hell. I'm not going to hell because of the birth I secured. Can I say this? I'm not going to hell because of the book my name's in. You see, every person that gets born again, their name gets written down in the Lamb's book of life. You see, in Revelation chapter number 20, we find the books are open. Yep. What books? First of all, Lamb's Book of Life. Yep. Those that are standing before the great white throne judgment, about ready to be thrown off in the lake of fire for eternal damnation. They're shown their name's not there. In Matthew 7, Jesus said, There's going to be many come to me. Uh, say, didn't we prophesy in your name? Uh, didn't we cast out devils in your name? Uh, didn't we do many wonderful works in your name? Uh, and he said, Depart from me, ye that worked iniquity. I never knew you. Right. I don't know if you've been watching that documentary on Hillsong on Discovery+. Plus. It's revealing a lot of these big old mega churches, all these window washing crowd, and all what they're real. They do a lot of things in the name of Jesus. The only problem is Jesus isn't doing anything in them. Mm. Uh, See, my name got written down in the book. So what's the other books? Then he opens up the books showing them all their sins. And then they're judged according to their sins. You know, all, all they, they got one verdict when he gets done, Brother James. They say, guilty, I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. And he says, here's your punishment. He throws them off in the lake of fire forever. I'm not going to hell because of the book my name's been written in. Matter of fact, it's not even my name. I don't even know what it is because I got a new name. Huh? I got my mm, heavenly name. Say, so when are you going to find out that when he calls me out of here? I'm glad he knows my name now. But he also knows my new name. Hmm? And he says, that, that, that can't be true. Oh, yeah, when he comes back literally this world in Revelation 19, he's even got a name that no man knows. Huh? Mm -mm. Oh, I'm not going to hell. Preacher, go to hell. I'm not going. Say, so why are you not going? I'm not going to hell because of the broken chains of my sin. Those who are captivated by sin, you're bound by it. The Bible says that the devil even has blinded the minds of them lest the glorious light of the gospel should shine unto them. You know why it's easy to sin? That's what we, what's what we are, sinners. And that's why you stay in your sin. You're captivated. You're you know why drunks can't break the chain of drinking? Because it's bondage. It's a demon within itself. You know why drug addicts can't quit doing drugs? They're bound to it. They're in bondage. Huh? You know why 
uh, uh, pedophiles can't be broken out there in bondage to it and every other sin out there liars can't quit lying uh, fakes can't quit being fakes uh, uh, you can go on and on and on and on why can't because they're bound by it but I've got good news if you ever call on the Lord Jesus Christ he breaks the chains brother Charlie some of them just immediately some, some folks say it takes a little bit transition but he still breaks the chains hmm. I said it last week I do all the booze I want to do I just don't want any you see when he breaks your chains what he does is he changes your want to's if any man be in Christ he's a new creature huh? old things pass away behold all things become new he changes your desires he breaks those chains that have you bound. All the chains of your sin, uh, he breaks them. Uh, there are folks in here used to be foul-mouthed. Uh, now their mouth opens up and praises God. How'd that happen? Uh, Jesus broke the chains. Uh, used to be some sat on a bar stool. Now they're sitting on a church pew. How'd that happen? Jesus broke the chains. Uh, hey, uh, some used to have needle tracks all up down their arms. Uh, but now they go out and they pass out tracks. Uh, how'd that happen? Uh, Jesus broke the chains. Uh, hey, I'm not going to hell because the broken chains of sin in my life. Uh, and I say this, I'm not going to hell because of the blessed promise I received. Huh? Whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. See, I, I, I wasn't the smartest light bulb in the bunch, but I had enough sense to put my faith in what God said. Amen. You wrestling with, God, with what God says, you'll never get born again. I just believed it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Bible said if any come to him he'd no wise cast him out I just believe God I took him at his word and I'm not going to hell matter of fact we know that the Bible says it's impossible for God to lie we know the Bible says that he's magnified his word even above his holy name and I'm here to tell you if I die and go to hell this book be a lie I'm here to tell you if I die and go to, go to hell God's a liar but he ain't a liar hmm? It's impossible for him to lie. He's holy. I'm just going to believe God. Huh? Let me say this lastly. I'm not going to hell because the bright morning star has a hold on me. I'm in his hand. Matter of fact, I'm engraved in the palm of his hands by a nail piercing. But I'm in his hand, and his hand's in the Father's hand. It's impossible for me to get out of the Father's hand. I say hallelujah because he's got a hold of me. I'm not holding him. I don't, even, I don't even have a hold of my own self half the time. But I got news for you. He's got a hold of me. And because he's got a hold of me, I'm not going to hell. There was a great man of God. He's in heaven today. His name is Brother Willard Thomas. Brother Willard Thomas was a great preacher, great man of God, but he was known for his poetry. I want to read you one of his poems. The title of his poems is, is this, He Wouldn't Stay Dead. It says, they laid his body in Joseph's new tomb and filled his disciples with sorrow and gloom. They did not remember what he had said, that he would die, but he wouldn't stay dead. Mary came at the break of day and found the stone was rolled away. She saw an angel and in terror fled and told his dis disciples that he didn't stay dead. In that cold, dark tomb, he would not stay. He conquered death and walked away. And now that old grave has lost its fear and dread. He lives again. He wouldn't stay dead. Full atonement and pardon were made, and forever the sin debt is marked fully paid. Hallelujah. Hmm. The price was his blood as it flowed crimson red, and I'm thankful today that he didn't stay dead. Let's go to our churches and cry aloud. Let's go to the market, marketplace and talk to the crowd. Let's go to the mission fields that lie up ahead and tell the whole world that he didn't stay dead I'm not going to hell because of what Jesus did that day and what he did in my heart some 40 years ago now friend I appreciate you being here 
I appreciate you going through all the trouble getting up on this Sunday, getting dressed, driving over here, putting up with the roundabout, coming here and listen to me holler and scream, watch these folks get excited. I appreciate all that. But if that's all you get out of it, friend, you've missed the mark. We're going to give you an invitation. To come and experience what Resurrection Sunday is all about. You see, the Bible says before we get saved, we're dead in trespasses and sin. And resurrection is so important because when we give our heart and life to Jesus, He raises us in newness of life. We come resurrected from our dead, lives, a dead life and sinful life. We become new creatures in Christ. Today, we invite you to come put your faith in Christ. You say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. We'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved. It's easy to get saved. What you need to realize is you're lost. And once you realize you're lost, then you just need to come and trust Christ. Uh, there is no supernatural revelation of the fact that when you know you're lost, that's the time to get saved. And you can be saved on this Easter Sunday. I wouldn't leave here not being saved. Say, preacher, I'm saved, but I'm not what I should be. Well, get what you should be. Just come on. Be what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to let people know Jesus lives inside of you. Let him shine forth. Maybe here today, it's been a while, you thanked him for saving you. Thanked him that we're not serving a dead idol or a dead God. We're not a God of wood or stone, but we're serving the risen Savior, the Lord of glory. Maybe you want to come and tell him how much you love him this morning. I know one thing, he didn't stay dead. And I know another thing, I'm not going to hell. Are you? You don't have to. You can make your reservation go to heaven this morning. I know that 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 I'm going to heaven. Why, why do you know that? The Bible says, these things that I have I written that you may know that you have eternal life. I know. Because I've done what God said. And you can know that too. If you'll come, put your faith in the Lord Jesus. Let's all stand. Miss Renee, you come. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. So they're picking out a song. Folks are coming to pray. Some are coming thanking God they're not going to hell. As these are coming, I'm going to have a word of prayer. Friend, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, we invite you to come. Put your faith in the Lord. Mom. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for the goodness of God. Lord, I deserve to go to hell. I was a sinner. But I'm not going to hell because of what you've done on Calvary. And what you've done in the fullness of the gospel. You died, was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures. Lord, I put my faith in you as the Lord and you changed my life. Lord, I fear there are folks here this morning don't know you. I pray they'd come, give their heart and life to Christ. Lord, the message has went forth. Lord, I pray you'd put a fear of hell in those that are lost. Open their eyes and help them to realize they don't have to go there. They'll come and give their heart and life to Jesus. I pray you'd save some folks this morning. I pray you'd bless your people. Blessing this invitation. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.